Hey everyone, Alex here. Just before we get into the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, we're going to do a feed drop of Flash Fantasy's Blood Run, Episode 1. This is the first episode of a one-shot campaign that's going to lead into their second season of Riftwalkers. It's a super fun and awesome episode, and I should know, I've been listening to Flash Fantasy for years. I was actually introduced to their Star Wars podcast, The Skeleton Crew, by some of our own fans, so I know you're going to love it. Enjoy Flash Fantasy's Blood Run. Welcome everyone to our second ever one-shot. I am your host and Game Master, Ryan, and I'm joined today by... Noah, Brett, Chris, and Laurel. We'll be playing the Genesis system here, which will carry over into the rest of Season 2. Now... First and foremost, we're going to do something that you'll get familiar with later, and that's called rolling for story and destiny points. This is just a special rule in the Genesis system that gives us points, tokens, what have you, to affect the rules in fun ways and make interesting narrative decisions. To start us off, I rolled a light side point, and that is going to go in the player's pool. I rolled a dark side point for the GM pool. Thank you. I also rolled a point for the GM pool. I rolled one dark side point also for the GM pool. And tying it up with a nice bow, I rolled two points for the GM pool. (laughs) We're stacking Ryan's hand here. (laughs) Wonderful, thank you. Now, (laughs) this game takes place squarely in between where season one ended and where season two begins. You'll learn a little about what's happened in the time since and see firsthand how the Riftwalkers of Yor have changed the world forever. So, without further ado, allow me to paint you a little picture. Two hundred and fifty years after the God's Fall event, the kingdoms and nations of the world still struggle to rebuild in the aftermath of the cataclysm that forever changed their reality. While peace slowly gains traction, skirmishes over border territories and their resources are still frequent, with death and disease playing a constant role in the lives of everyday folk. Growing whispers, however, speak of a unifying force, the Compact, that will work to bring order, justice, and prosperity back to the embattled lands of the former Fell, now known as Vrannanos. As the God's Fall event implies by its very name, the ethereals, realities, and valors of old, mostly forgotten by this point in time, were made mere mortals by the wishes of Valmes Sulis El. Some of these former gods perished in the Cataclysm. Some tried to seize power and were immediately extinguished. Others fled, hiding in the edges of the world until their ultimate deaths, while others still pressed on, living out their lives in normalcy, their pasts a collection of well-guarded secrets. Divinity, however, leaves its marks. Organizations arose with the express purpose of hunting down these former gods and their descendants. What's more, a great superstition has taken root among the shadier elements of society, surrounding the consumption of once divine blood. But even in these divided lands, these fringe practices were swiftly quashed. Cults and criminal gangs proliferating these foul goods were exterminated. The last of the ethereals died in peace or pain, and the blood of the gods was lost. Or so everyone thought. One final holdout, the Scarlet Covenant, makes for the promise of freedom and relative safety on the forbidden shores of the distant continent of Viridian and the small colony of Aiden Selk. A caravan, carrying its priceless shipment, limps through the warring Demlik country of Rekir as it makes for the independent ports of Heraclea, a small nation outside the former borders of the Fell and not yet darkened by the compact's looming shadow. It's there, on the sun-baked hills and plains of Heraclea, where four mercenaries wait one morning for their peers to arrive and the caravan to be handed off to them. They've been told they have only 48 hours to see the shipment safely to one of the Covenant's waiting ships, Otherwise, the shipment will spoil, and their lives will be forfeit. This is Riftwalkers Blood Run. Players, as the morning coastal sun beats down on your head, the salt-strewn breeze flitting across your faces, why don't you introduce yourselves? Give us a little picture of who your character is and what they're doing as you have this moment to yourself. Sitting on a log, a intricately carved longbow propped up on its side, sits a slender, pale figure with 
holes in the side of his head where ears should be, and simple leathers, some straps across his chest containing various tools, knickknacks, things that would be useful along the road. And he's simply flaying a small creature that presumably he's hunted along the road to consume for his breakfast. This is Vanatil Saveselerin, a deep colonist sanguine who has arisen from the depths to make his life here doing some mercenary work, waiting for the cargo. And his eyes flit every now and then from this small creature that he's working on over to the side where another person looking somewhat similar, even a relative to him, is. Yes, indeed. Under a nearby tree sits another sanguine, looking very similar to the first. Across the sanguine's lap is a darkened steel blade with fine red lines running across its length, almost like veins. And he sits there, whetstone in hand, honing the edge of this blade, every now and again checking down its length to make sure it's still razor sharp. There's no finery, just mottled leathers, worn boots, and a sour expression on his face as his eyes also flit back and forth between his sword and the other members of this party. This is Gavrodas Savaselerin, the brother of Vanatil. One of the aforementioned members of this party is an absolutely enormous Demlik woman. Uh, she's about 6'8", very well-muscled, very built. Uh, she looks like she could strangle you with a single hand. Uh, she has black hair that goes down to about her waist that is styled back in thick Dutch braids that are woven with various pieces of bone. She wields a spear that the shaft of which is kind of curved a little, and there are two handles on it like you would see on a scythe, but it does have a spear tip at the top. And she is currently sort of crouched in the dirt, throwing and reading a set of hand-carved rune, like bone runes. Her name is Reaper. And to the side, standing nowhere in particular, you see a fairly tall man, and where there once was horns that were cut to his skull, he being a tiefling, you can see that there's some shaggy hair that's a little patchy where there were horns. And he's wearing a long tan trench coat to cover his tail. And he has golden eyes. And he's just standing here, not really talking to anyone in particular. And around his belt, although you can't tell from, you know, at first glance, he has what appears to be tied around his waist in twine white shells and dates and then also a massive date hanging across his neck and this man's name being a tiefling is a Bonaby Hodeskala or otherwise known as the hunter the morning continues on without much incident it's quiet amongst you four who among you has the highest vigilance Barnaby has one yellow two greens same well, what do you know? Gavrodas also has one yellow. So we're going to have to fight to the death to see who's the most vigilant. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll flip a coin. Heads. All right. Noah, as Gavrodas is sitting, observing, make a average vigilance check for me. And that is two difficulty dice. Average is two. Yes. That is one success and one advantage. So not only do you hear this commotion in time to warn all of your compatriots, but you also have the requisite time to get into more advantageous positions, we'll say. As in the next moment, there's a tone, like a raptor's call on the distant wind. You recognize it as a signal, albeit not a good one, meaning that the caravan approaches. Danger hot on their tails. The next moment, a wagon crests a small hill just a tiny ways off from where your group sits, following behind it another smaller wagon, and in hot pursuit, four Demlik Freeriders. The caravaneers exchange crossbow fire with the Demlik Freeriders as loud cracks and booms go off in puffs of smoke as these Freeriders fire rudimentary rifles at the caravaneers. Some of the Freeriders go down. The driver of the smaller wagon in the back is hit and falls as the wagon itself clatters onto its side and the horse is broken. Three free riders remain as they charge, galloping toward you right behind this enormous wagon. And in the next second, one of the wheels gives out 
cracking as a projectile impacts it in just the right spot to send it, its contents, its rider, and its guard flying. I'm going to make everyone do some rolls here to get out of the way. And you will all get a boost because of Gavrodas's advantage. Nice! Thanks, Gavrodas. The power of vigilance. I'll let you choose if you want to make either a hard athletics or a hard coordination. And hard is three? Three, yes. Three difficulty. And you'll get one boost die. Vanatil got one success and three advantage. Gavrodas got three failures and three advantage. Reaper got one success. And Barnaby just straight up three failures. <laughs> so- <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thriving. Reaper, as part of this wagon, snaps off and comes just shooting toward you. You are able to dive out of the way. Similarly, Vanatil, as the back wagon wheel then breaks from its axle and spins off, you are able to get yourself and with both your and Gavrodas's advantage, I'll say that you're also able, if you'd like, to get your brother out of the way. Can this be what happens in brother-like coordination? So, so this is this is what I'm thinking because Gavrodas was right under this tree. He would have signaled to everybody that is coming because we knew it was coming, and then he, knowing that you're like the sharpshooter, would have gotten into position to like boost you into one of the branches of this tree. But in doing so, might have taken a hit. I like it. That's cannon. Nice. Barnaby, however, you are unable, as you were just pacing in the road, to get out of the way in time as a piece of this wagon clips your legs. That is going to deal five damage to you. My soak is two, so three wounds. Okay. However, this turns out to be a little advantageous for you as you are floored. The rest of the wagon just tips and flies over you, flipping onto its side and then over and over crushing two of the Demlik Freeriders and their horses in the process. As the dust settles, you hear only the sounds of a pained horse in the distance, a scared whinnying closer to you, and some angered lickish. There's cursing from what you assume is the surviving driver of the wagon that has flipped on its side here. And for Barnaby, right beside you, there is just the crushed body of what used to be the guard that was on that caravan. As this rider approaches the wagon, going through the dust, they are unaware of the surviving driver who gets to their feet, shakily, unhooks the crossbow from the like mutilated back of the dead guard besides Barnaby, and frickin' misses with a failure and two advantage. It's a pretty bad roll. Uh, the free rider has not yet dismounted, and so will just simply charge, swinging an axe down at that driver. But that free rider's dice have canceled out, so things are going pretty well. Can Reaper stab this rider? Yeah, you're close enough. Okay, rad. Reaper's just gonna straight go for the gut. I'll give you a boost from the driver's advantage. Dope. I am going to willingly take on one setback to add two to my damage as a hardened warrior of the Demlik Nation. <laughs> nice. Here we go. Oh. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> uh, that is a beautiful success, two advantage, and two triumph for Reaper. You want a crit? You can add 20 to it. <laughs> yeah, I do want a crit. <laughs> do I want a crit? Oh, crippled dope. Wow, yeah, one of the target's limbs is crippled until healed or replaced. (laughs) I'm gonna say that is one of the legs that you just, like, stab into and basically yank him off his horse as he falls onto the ground. Yeah, I do kind of want to, like, launch him backwards over my head, just, like, full strength off the horse. That will take him out. He's gone. (laughs) That's the last of the riders. The caravan, however, as everyone gets their bearings, Vanatil can get down from the tree now that the danger has safely passed. Gavrodas gathers himself and walks in. Barnaby gets to his feet. You see the devastation before you. The smaller of the wagons has been not as badly crippled. It has been turned on its side. But the horse, as I said, seems to have been taken out. This wagon, the larger of the two, everything about it has buckled. Splinters of wood remain. The wheels are shredded. Everything is gone. 
The driver barely limps to his feet, and the guard is dead, a smear somewhere earlier on the road. One of the horses, however, miraculously survived, still like set up in all this barding and whatnot, nearby the tree that Vanatil and Gavrodas are next to. And then further back are the corpses of the other free riders, guard, and driver. As you get closer to him, he wipes blood from his brow. He seems to be an older man, bulky, fellish, bit of a belly, a gnarly scar disfiguring most of his jaw and like up to where a blind eye is, and then just like patchy, graying hair atop his head. A seasoned warrior, no doubt, but maybe past his prime. Barnaby would like to get to his feet and will approach the driver. We'll take it from here, brother. The driver will actually grab you by the shoulder before you take a couple steps away from him. And he just says, Oh, this job's getting worse by the god a minute. You all are supposed to be my relief. Quite a bunch of heroes you are. I can relieve you of your head. Whoa, 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 take it easy. All right, all right, no need for making idle threats. It was not idle. You put your metal against mine and we'll see, missy. <laughs> Reaper, like, yanks her spear out of the crippled leg of the man she killed in one hit and levels it at the guy like, try me. <laughs> he levels his stare at you in, in like, try me way. <laughs> <laughs> just his eyes, he's just looking at her? Yeah. <laughs> Barnaby will interrupt this before this escalates any further. I was like, all right, all right, no need for that. No need for that. Please be on your way. And he'll try to separate the two. No, not a bloody chance. After all them getting just back like that, I'm seeing this to the end. <laughs> all, th- all four of us look at each other like, mm, <laughs> I don't know about that. Barnaby is going to try to de-escalate this situation and will say, I... Look at me. Look at me. We'll take care of it. All right? All right? You'll be on your way. You can try to charm him. This will be your charm versus his cool. I rolled two successes and one triumph. And this guy rolled a triumph, two advantage, and five successes. Some hot dice, man. And he just levels his gaze from Reaper to Barnaby and goes, I don't bloody think so. I don't trust the Scarlet Covenant to fulfill their end of the bargain. I'm getting my pay. I'm taking this to the end of the goddamn road. Living a dead. You hear? Well, all right. Suit yourself. Whatever. And then he's going to continue going to the wagon and starting to consolidate everything. Walking up after dismounting his branch on the tree, Vanatil kind of walks up sidling alongside where Barnaby had been, but presumably Reaper still is kind of eyeing this guy. Oh yeah, she's not going to take her eyes off of this (laughs) idiot until he bends to her will. And he just kind of flashes this guy a, what's an attempt to be a disarming smile, but is more threatening with his slightly sharpened teeth and blood red eyes. And he just says... Mm. So you mean to tell me that you did not get paid up front? I have here. I have when the job's done. Then I believe that that is your fault for not securing your own fortune when working for the type of people that work for the Scarlet Covenant. We are the ones tasked to bring this to its final destination, not you. Oh, listen here, shitface. I'm a grunt. I had hand at best. Eh? I'm here to do my job and get paid. My boss is a smear on the road back there, right? He's not handing out any coin. I'm getting it for myself. Now you, and he looks at Reaper, Damlek with a temper. Help me flip this on the wagon. And you, he looks at Vanatil, why don't you take your freak show brother there? I assume, bloody sanguine old one. Get that horse on bridle and hook it up to this one. Vanatil... We'll just kind of look up at Reaper and just kind of like shoot this glance that has an even more like, again, one could in some dimension interpret it as a kindly, sure, let's go along with that. But that's definitely not what it looks like. (laughs) But he will go over to govern us. Reaper will touch the tip of her spear against his heart and just push a little bit, like not cutting the cloth, not not pushing to draw blood, but like. 
strong enough to be like, I could hurt you, I'm choosing not to. And she says, Orders. You do not give them round here. Oh, and you do. Uh, she just smiles at him and pushes him out of the way with her spear if she can. He's walking away already as he heads over to the uh, toppled smaller wagon in an effort to flip it right side up. Governor Das, who had been inspecting the bodies of one of these free riders, but had been listening to the entire conversation. As Vanatil approaches him, Governor Das will look up from what he was doing, pilfering and such. And in the native sanguine tongue, Urveil, will say to Vanatil, This changes nothing. The plan is still the same. Deliver the package, get paid, and then take the package back. And kill anyone who gets in our way. Vanatil offers no verbal response to him, but offers just a, a solitary nod. And then kind of gestures over to the horse that has been told to him to get ready. Yeah, yeah. It's like just the pieces of the wagon that would be used to hitch it to the wagon are just like dragging on the ground from its saddle and such. Any barding and what have you. And the larger wagon, a part of it had the appearance of like a covered wagon, but that's been torn and ripped and is now just a strewn on the ground. As Barnaby heads over, you see within it is actually this like intricate metal cage. Very like almost artistic steelwork on the outside here, kind of like you might see on a metal screen in say like Ottoman times or in specific like Arabian like architecture. So there is light coming in through these like intricate patterns into that cage, but you really can't see anything yourself. You can surmise that whatever's in there and say if you were in there, you could see out, but not the other way around. From a cursory inspection, I won't require a roll here. It does look mostly intact, though I will say there is still a chance that the shipment, and since you know its nature, uh, blood, whatever is transporting this liquid might have been compromised. At least that could be your hunch. Okay, and upon seeing this, not wanting to let the shipment spoil, Barnaby is going to call over some others so that they might reinforce this box. Oi, Reaper! Want to come and help me over here? Since you have asked nicely, yes. That a go. She says that look watching this other idiot walk away to the other wagon, which she fully intends to make him flip over on his own. Uh, but she will go into the back of the other wagon with Barnaby. What is it you want to do? Yeah, I think that the plan would be more closely um, inspect this box and move it back so that it's secure and also look if there's any potential places that it is vulnerable or see if there's anything leaking from it, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. Give me an easy perception. Can Reaper assist and provide a boost or two? Yeah, one boost. One boost. She's not bellish. <laughs> On top of that, Barnaby will activate his talent of heightened awareness, which adds one blue. And also, if Reaper is inspecting this, will add two blue instead to this inspection. Okay, I rolled three successes, one advantage, and one triumph. Ooh, Dang, you know everything continue. there ever was to know about this box. <laughs> Okay. An Ottoman Times expert. <laughs> <laughs> Something above a buff. <laughs> There is some denting, there's some scraping along the sides. You feel like you could pretty easily jimmy the door open. It seems to be compromised. However, it is pretty heavily riveted and secured to the back of this wagon that's been mostly destroyed. So the box itself, not moving. Okay, well, Barnaby will do as such. He's going to jerry-rig this door and will try to pry it open. All right, we can say you find some suitable rubble or debris nearby. Why don't you make a... Yeah, that'll be athletics. Okay. How are your athletics? Would you like Reaper to do this or are you strong boy too? Um, I think that I think that Reaper would see that th this might be a mild struggle, so... <laughs> <laughs> Barnaby goes and picks up some rubble. Reaper just takes it out of his hands as he returns. Yeah. Yes, yes. So Barnaby tries for a second, but then goes, Oh, yeah, loosen it up for you. And we'll give the floor to Reaper. How very like a man. <laughs> Reaper will just, she will ignore entirely whatever tools he was using and use her spear to like leverage it open. That'll be too difficult, and you'll get a boost from Barnaby. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad it's not a setback. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh man, I talked such a big game too. Uh, two failure, three advantage. By this time, as you fail to pry this door open, it's a little trickier than you might have imagined. Uh, Gavrodas and Vanatil have made it over with the horse, and you see this driver also walking back, having righted the wagon. Wow, he did it. He's a Good big guy. I, well, <laughs> Reaper doesn't think much of most people. As he approaches, he looks at the four of you kind of looking at this door and the brother's sanguine coming around with the horse. Just points over his shoulder at the righted wagon. Oh, why don't you two itch that up? We enjoying the scenery here, yeah? what? Would you like to open the box? Well, he ain't coming with us any other way. No shit. He'll grab a sword from one of the free riders as he passes, and he'll muscle his way past Barnaby and Reaper and shove the blade into the gap of the door, and he'll try his darn dished. Come on, guy. And you, you've loosened it up, so he'll get two boosts with one success and six advantage. He strains for a little bit, and as soon as you think, probably Reaper with great satisfaction, that he won't succeed, a bolt flies off one of the hinges, and then the whole thing just creaks open and then falls down, Barnaby and himself narrowly getting out of the way as this very heavy door falls sideways off the wagon and into the dirt. Gavrodas and Vanatil, you obviously hear this commotion as you're hitching the horse. Can Reaper peer inside this now open box? You can. And surprisingly, you see nothing. Where there should be padding and boxes and maybe even like open vials, something. There's just darkness. Save for the light being cast inside here at the very front. It looks like the box is empty. And then, briefly, your eyes catch the faintest glint of movement in the back corner. I think she'd probably point her spear at it. Who is there? This driver will also point the sword as he steps up beside you. And you hear a startled voice. It doesn't say anything, but you hear this sort of frightened gasp. And it sounds young. Feminine. Reaper will look at this man whose name actually she's realizing now that she doesn't know <laughs> and say, A person you're transporting. I ain't transporting no goddamn person. Oh, so the non existent vials of blood are what is gasping. Look, I do work for the Scarlet Covenant. Same as you. You know what we were transporting? Is that it? No, but I would not deny that it is a person inside this box. Come out. Reaper will say to whoever is inside. You hear heightened breathing, but no further movement. Barnaby has seen this, but from behind this driver and Reaper, and will kind of push his way between them to get a good look at what's inside there, hearing that it's a person, which piques his interest. Reaper's going to flip the spear around and like put it into the box and sort of shoop it around in a circle <laughs> to kind of like chase out whatever's inside. To unstick it from the edges. <laughs> you clang your spear against the walls of this box, making an absolute racket. <laughs> yeah, like I want to like chase, like like I'm chasing out a raccoon. And you see this figure, the box is rectangular, it's turned on its side, so there's not a lot of space to move here. And you just see them dart away, making a little shriek as they do. If you want me to reach in there and pull you out, I will. The driver actually will just kind of give you a shove. Be like, are you insane? Listen to it. It's a goddamn child. Then it will be easy to drag out of the box. Be my bloody guest. And I'll just step off the wagon. Reaper will kind of bend down and scrunch inside. (laughs) She's quite large. Okay, you fit through the door with some difficulty, but you're inside the box. And it's dark in there, I imagine. Yeah, but as your eyes adjust, you can see clearly that uh, the driver was right. There is a quite frail, quite dirtied girl in the back, huddled in the corner in the dark. And why would they want to transport you? She mouths something, but it's inaudible. If you come out, we promise not to hurt you. She'll simply shake her head and try retreating elsewhere, but there's really nowhere to go. I'm sure the commotion you heard it... This cart not going anywhere. Your choice is stay here, starve, come with us, eat. She'll give that some thought. Why don't you roll for me, Laurel? 
I feel like you're not exactly charming, and I feel like that's a pretty, like, quid pro quo. So, let's say negotiation. I mean, if you think that (laughs) Reaper has any social skills, you are mistaken. The girl got two successes and one advantage. Four advantage. You gain some ground, as you're a little more calming in your demeanor, a little more reasonable in your requests. The girl takes a few light steps toward you, gingerly peering past you to see the blinding light outside. But she'll stop just a little ways, a couple feet from you. Okay. Reaper will back away and will, like, go to her pack, like, completely leave the wagon, go to her pack, get some rations out of, like, her backpack, return, and set them, like, just outside Like, make sure that this girl can see and set them just outside the box. As this box door slammed open and Reaper was clanging her little spear uh, along the sides, Vanatil definitely would have, you know, after they had secured this horse, maneuvered himself back around to presumably where Barnaby and the driver guy were standing, kind of watching Reaper go into this box. And he'll motion over to Gavrodas, just kind of like, Gavrodas, there is something concerning about this package. I think it is alive. You do see Reaper trying to feed it. <laughs> <laughs> and and then he, as you know, Reaper is placing these things outside of the box, he will address his comments to Reaper. And what have you found? A small creature that we can lure with us to become your pet? A pet would be easier to tame. It is a girl. He just mutters to himself and says, Va'il below. Well then, hurry it up. Get it out of there. We must be on the road. I am aware. Reaper says, like, sprinkling (laughs) (laughs) rations around. (laughs) Barnaby, upon seeing a girl come out of the darkness, a smile will slowly creep across his face because this is a... A familiar scene that he's had in his time as the hunter. But to confirm his suspicions, he's going to keep his distance a little bit from her and will address her by saying, Sweetheart, what is your name? You're looking at her as she's still like barely in the threshold of the box. And with that, she'll retreat a little further in. Reaper smacks Barnaby. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I was just trying to be friendly. Don't worry, sweetheart. We'll, we'll protect you. <laughs> we were like <laughs> face palms really slowly. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, I'm a woman in real life. Okay, I know it's creepy, okay? I realize that. <laughs> no, I'm loving it. Like this gross, grungy, you know, it, in a <laughs> belt man <laughs> is like, don't worry, we'll protect you. I should mention also that Barnaby has been getting really cozy with this guy who we still don't know his name and a little closer to Reaper and you might notice a foul stench coming from him and so he's kind of repulsive on top of that. And he smells bad too. (laughs) You can tell the hunter was here because it smells like an outhouse. (laughs) Reaper will nudge him with the end of her spear and say, move back. All right, all right, Mike, no offense. And he's going to follow the direction of Reaper and step a few steps back, but will continually be fixing his eyes on the girl. And as Barnaby, like, moves back and kind of enters Gavrodas's space, Gavrodas will, like, take one whiff and be like, ah, move back further. Your smell offends me. And he'll, like, put a hand on Barnaby and then, like, push him back behind him. <laughs> Where is Reaper in relation? Like, is there space to maneuver past Reaper to get closer to the entrance of this box? Almost certainly, yeah. She's leaving enough space for the girl to come out, so. Then, as this whole show is going on, Vanatil will just reach down to his pack, grab some rope that he has tied onto the back there, and he just says... Reaper, move aside. We must be on the road now. And he is going to attempt to go in there with this rope. Are you going to tie her up? She was already locked in a cage. We cannot let her be running around free. Reaper will extend a hand to kind of like block him from going inside and kind of, you know, bend over to be seen by the girl and say, your best bet is with me. 
he will tie you up if you do not come out. Roll another negotiation, Laurel. Oh, boy. I'm going to spend a story point because I would like this girl to come out of the ding ding wagon. <laughs> I'll give you a boost as well because of these circumstances. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it's a little scary. Because of the uh, the the little uh, good cop, bad cop, well, I should say bad cop, worst cop <laughs> type of team. So. Little uh, bad cop, stinky cop. <laughs> <Dang> yeah. <laughs> Is she rolling as well or am I rolling with difficulties? You're rolling against hers. Okay. She got one success. Ooh, Reaper got one success for advantage. She will crawl out of the box, take the rations, and step up to you. Okay. Reaper will take a very clearly defensive stance in front of her. Like, if anybody comes near this girl and makes her run away, I will chop <laughs> off your head. Like, that is the vibe that she is giving. The driver will clock that vibe and just, like, nod and start heading toward the wagon <laughs> that uh, Vonatil and Gavrodas brought over with the horse. Vonatil will just look up at Reaper and just say, It is of no concern to me who she travels with. Just make sure she does not cause us to fall behind. Well, then best saddle up, sweetheart's port to me as two days away. Vanatio will shimmy his booty on over to the nearest wagon as quickly as he can. The nearest single wagon. Yeah. Yeah, what's the situation with the wagon? How many of us can ride it? How many of us have to walk alongside? We only have the one horse, which I think needs to pull the wagon. This is true. The wagon can fit four, including the driver. So, so two people need to walk. Barnaby is going to sit up front with the driver and plop himself right next to him. There is like, your hips are touching. It's that tight up there on the smaller <laughs> wagon. Gross. And as you squish next to him and just this odor wafts from your person, he just turns at you and goes, Oh, the good God am is that. Oh, I thought you could use a company. No? Sit in the bloody back, Ingrid. Barnaby, you should walk. Behind everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Preferably downwind. Barnaby is going to take that almost as a compliment. So he is going to give you a little salute and he will go at the back of the wagon walking. I think Reaper will climb into the wagon part of the wagon with the girl and sort of set up shop like, I will still kill you if you come near me. Okay, that's two passengers and the driver. Brother, keep our eyes on the driver. I can keep watch from out here. Make sure we are not ambushed along the way. My thoughts exactly. You are a better scout than I. And then with a nod, Gavrodas will take his position aside the wagon, suitably far away from Barnaby. <laughs> <laughs> and Vanatil hops on up to take the place where Barnaby had been and notices there is a lingering stench that is still there. <laughs> and he kind of turns to the driver and says... Oh, can we please be moving on our way quickly? Get in the back. He looks at the driver, and then he looks back at... <laughs> at Reaper? He looks back, and he just sees that Reaper is there next to the girl. <laughs> and he kind of, like... Like, he looks back a couple times between the two, almost, like, <laughs> judging whether he wants to duke it out with this driver guy or go back and sit next to Reaper. And eventually he relents, and he hops out, and he winds his way back around, and he positions himself in a corner of the wagon that is as far away from the pair as he can be. Great. Then, with a crack of the reins, the wagon is underway. Barnaby and Gavrodas pulling up a brisk jog on either side as you start your two-day journey toward Port Tumir. Hopefully safety, a payday, and an uncertain